you can tell me about life on Mars. Oh, life on Mars. Just so, like last week when I mentioned the face on Mars. Oh, yeah. yeah Turns that. out I was right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, wait. Oh, no, that's the wrong story I've got up here. So, uh, yes, here. So, um, I've been talking about since the show's been going, um, Perseverance collecting samples in the Jezero crater since it landed in 2021. Um this is essentially just a bunch of scientists coming together and going through mountains of data mountains and mountains of data that uh perseverance has scanned so one of the instruments on perseverance is a downward facing radar instrument um i think it allows uh data acquisition from up to 30 meters i'm just doing that off the top of my head it's not very far below the ground uh, below the surface okay. um but ever since it's landed it's been essentially scanning the ground um trying to see what's underneath now the benefits of that is the data that it's gathering will be able to tell um researchers will be able to tell what kind of minerals the composition um and then from that they can rewind time um by identifying the minerals and seeing right. what has happened to get these minerals to form. Now, the reason that Perseverance landed in the Jezero crater is um, the scientists um, from both NASA and independently believed that there, if there, there was, was going to be water anywhere, it would be there. Um, yep. Or that's at least a very good uh, position to look for it and all evidence at the moment and it, it isn't 100 percent confirmed because we don't have the samples yet but um all evidence is pointing towards a river delta system within the um jezero crater now if you're anywhere on earth there was going to be life or evidence of life it would be a completely drained river Think about how many right. individual pieces of life are within um, a lake or something like that. Yeah, even just microbial bacteria. Yeah. Like, and then there's fishies. <laughs> yeah, and fishies. So what um, researchers have done, they published a new study. Uh, they did a geological survey using Perseverance's data and they found that the 4 billion year old crater was created, that was created through an asteroid impact, um, was later filled with younger sediment and rocks. Notably, these younger sediments and rock could have been carried down into the creator through multiple river systems, which has which backs up the previous theory that I was talking about, where um, they were just looking at like top down shots of the crater, yep. and they were seeing like, oh, the it's kind of like a river system going through here, or it's like was there? So that's backing up that theory even more. Um, these suggestions were why Perseverance was sent to investigate the crater. And now scientists have found horizontal layers of underground sediment that resemble a lake on Earth. So That's this theory cool. is starting to show its, um, um, I don't want to say, I suppose wings yeah. like Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Perseverance. Um, <laughs> So they explained in the study that as water levels increase and decrease, they it creates the web that we see. Um, even I've got like a creek out the back of my house. It's like when there's no um, water running and it's really hot, you can see certain levels yeah. of water where it's um, increased to and then it's decreased down to and it creates that like little line. And then up the side of like a mud wall, it's like you've got different... If you were to mark out like the date... You would yeah. then have a time of when the water rose and decreased. Um, I think that is about it. Yeah, there isn't that much um, to this, but because Perseverance has already collected samples, I'm pretty sure it's about 60% full. It's um, yeah. the, the total um, capacity of the rover. The scientists, after they found this out and they were like, oh, wow, there is more credence to this theory about being this being a potential ancient lake that's drained perseverance could already have evidence of past oh, right. microbial life within its capsules but we won't know until 
those samples get back to Earth. Which will be in 2030. See, if they had that <laughs> supercomputer there with like data centers and AI robots, we would know. It's 2030, put that, put man. That, you put that sample in there and it'll, and, it'll, and it'll give you the results in 30 seconds. Yeah, and it's 20, chat 20 GPT or 30 powered. seconds. <laughs> 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 so the chat GPT just scans the samples yep. and then it's like yeah well we have it um mm-hmm. and then if elon musk's ai scans the samples it'll say yeah we have it and then crack a joke yeah it'll be like hey buy a tesla <laughs> um <laughs> no it is disappointing that we won't know until at least 2030 which mm. kind of stinks um it's and the reason for that is nasa's budgeting problems plus like uh yep. Uh, there's so many different moving um, factors with the Mars sample return mission. It is they did it. I think it was only a couple weeks ago, or it would have been, it might have been a month ago that we um, I would have brought up an internal survey, an independent review board. We're looking at like NASA's essentially the whole plan of the Mars sample return mission, how much money they have to spend yeah. over this thing, and they were like, "There's no way you're going to be able to do this." and in the time that you say yeah yeah so they had to push back more and this is like nasa's own internal independent review board so it's like uh no so perseverance is i think is going to end up being like i said sees about 60 percent full at the moment um he'll be full for a while and before we managed to collect the samples but yeah long and the short of this story is the researchers believe or they really are hoping and they think there's a very big chance that within some of those capsules and samples there is evidence of life which would be you could argue the greatest scientific discovery ever life can exist on other planets that's what that would be saying well, yeah, it will just confirm what we kind of suspect. Everybody, yeah, or what everybody is just saying that look that it kind of has to be based on X X and X. But like, you just want that proof, though. Yeah, just to just to settle settle it. Now, you put another story in in the notes here about life in, on an asteroid. So I think that oh yeah, that would um, kind of lead into that. What's the deal with this one? Okay. Oh, this is the the Hayabusa two mission. Yeah, this is Japan's. Um, so uh, I call it JAXA, which is essentially Japan's NASA. Is the Japan? Um, what is it? Japan's order? In, I don't know what it's called. It's a big name. Why don't for they it. just call it JAXA? Yeah, <laughs> JAXA. I guess JAXA is kind of cool. Put an X in anything, and it yeah. becomes cooler. It's way better. They should just call it Jack's Blade. <laughs> Jack's blade. <laughs> yeah, with blade in, put blade in yeah. anything. It's automatically cooler. <laughs> um. So yeah, this kind of yeah, you're right. Kind of trails onto um, what I was talking about within the Jezero crater. Now, Japan, I'm pretty sure was the first um nation to recover samples from an asteroid and bring it back to Earth. Um. And now, I think I just want to get the date for it to make sure it was right. Yeah, okay. So it was brought back to Earth in 2020. And since then, has been undergoing um, analysis by researchers. Yep. Um, and they've discovered uh, organic matter within the asteroid. And the theory behind this is that asteroids essentially act as like a transportation system. Yeah, this is kind of like ancient alien type stuff. Well, not necessarily, but you know, like it's kind of like, well, yeah. if this asteroid didn't hit, then you wouldn't have life on Earth sort of thing. Like it brought X, like it brought like the build, enough building blocks to be able to kickstart. Exactly right. And it's like, there's even theories about like, how did, how did water develop on earth? It's like maybe a comet, um, yep. which is an icy asteroid smashed into earth, um, melted. We have water and then creates the whole weather system, which then further water, yep. further water. Um, but with this asteroid, um, Re- Raigu, I cannot pronounce any of these foreign names for the life of me. Ryugu. Ryugu. I'm just going by like Street Fighter because like Ryu is in Street Fighter. Yeah, we'll, we'll go by that. What game is we'll here? Go by Ryugu. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's three thousand feet wide asteroid uh, originally discovered in 1999. Um, 
through the samples, the team was able to just, they describe it as melt splashes. So yep. because the asteroid has no atmosphere, tiny little bits of dust and cosmic dust that are, some are traveling at extremely high speeds collide into the surface of the asteroid and it creates a, a reaction where it's super hot in that one yeah. spot, which then melts and changes the composition of the um, surface of the asteroid. And it, it, you know, it rapidly cools as well. And this forms these melt splashes as they um, describe in the study. Uh, the post read, the voids within these melt splashes correspond to water vapor released from rig Regus, um, Regus. Uh, hydrosilicates and subsequently captured in within the melt splashes. So, so you can, it's you like can say hydrosilicates, but you can't say Ryugu. <laughs> 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 All right, All right. you having fun, Costa. You having fun? <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot more of these words like, yeah. that are that I like with carbonaceous. What the hell is that? <laughs> carbonaceous is I think carbon materials. That's how I read that. Okay. Um, yeah. So essentially. <laughs> dust particle smacks into the surface yeah. of an asteroid it's so hot through that collision it releases water vapor which is then captured and rapidly cooled within um it's kind of like i don't know why i'm using this as a reference but you know how in jurassic park how they like the, i love a jurassic park reference um they the mosquito is caught in the amber yeah yep that's essentially that's how, what that's they how found. they got the dna isn't that, that's the whole, like, how they made the dinosaurs, isn't it? Like, they, they yeah. found the mosquitoes and then there's, like, that little animation where it shows, like, a mosquito biting, like, a T-Rex's butt or something. Yeah, a dinosaur. It's frozen and then they just, in, whatever. Yeah, you reverse the, engineer the magic, it. the magic of DNA. Yeah. So that's essentially what they've done with minerals and the theory, like I was saying earlier, um... Oh, sorry, I, I should say, uh, they also found carbon, which is a part of the seeds of life. Like, we wouldn't be here without carbon. Yeah, um, yeah and oh, I just want to make sure. We propose that the carbonaceous materials formed from cometary, um, co comet, cometary organic matter via the evaporation of volatiles such as nitrogen and oxygen during the impact induced heating. This suggests that the cometary matter was transported to the near earth region from the outer solar system. This organic matter might be the small seeds of life once discovered from space to earth. So delivered from space to earth. Oh, delivered yeah, from would, Yeah. Yeah. So that's like that whole theory that, you know, life, you know, came from like another planet or something like that or a distant galaxy and then a comet comes to earth and then kickstarts it's pretty cool it's very cool i mean it's it's still a theory we can't confirm anything but this isn't the first time that we've found organic matter nasa if you remember a few weeks ago um i think um we talked about on the show that nasa's asteroid sample contained organic matter so I think, I think the theory is yeah. correct. I think, yeah, I think it like, there's enough, like there's enough to it yeah. to basically suggest that like, yeah, if there is an impact that obviously it's going to transfer, like, yeah. why wouldn't it? And throughout the impact, the composition of the minerals yeah, right. on yeah. both the asteroid and the object that it's colliding change. Change. Yeah. From the intense heat and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be, there's going to be a reaction. Yeah. That's, um, Physics, baby. <laughs> exactly. <laughs>